Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been so long and I do do apologize from the bottom of my heart, but there's a lot been going on in my life and I'm going to update you on what has been going on in my life in this Get Ready With Me video, my very first one. And it's the pumpkin spice edition Starbucks. I'm going to try this for the first time. So let's just jump right into it. I've never done one of these Get Ready With Me videos, but I thought it would be a good way to kind of catch you guys up on everything that's been going on in my life because I have been MIA. Um, for those of you who have noticed, um, um, from YouTube, I haven't really been making much videos, and there is reason for that, so I will update you um, in this video. First off, well, first things first, I'm going to try this. I've never, <laughs> so I'm trying to see what the big deal is about um, the spiced pumpkin latte and whatever. I know like people freak over this stuff, and I've never tried it. Um, I usually just stick to like the same old stuff that I always get at Starbucks, so I decided today because it's fall and because I haven't seen you guys in so long, I'm going to try it and let you know my thoughts. So here it goes. It's pretty good. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, like, yeah, it's good, it's good. Hmm, okay. So this is what the hype is, huh? This is what people foam over and go crazy over. I understand now, guys. It's really good, actually. Very good. Okay, I'm gonna have to put that away while I get started. So, I'm gonna put my hair back just because, yeah, I want to. It gets out of my face while I do this. So, um, before I start, I'm going to put on this uh, white leaf rose almond oil. This stuff, oh my god, guys, it's so amazing. Like. I've been adding this at the beginning of all my makeup routine because I find it gives me that extra glowy look, like natural glowy look. Um, and it's great for hydration for my skin, which I need because lately my skin, like I broke out. Oh God, I don't know, it must be like that time of the month or stress or I don't know what, but I broke out and I find that this is kind of helping like with hydration and stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that on. And yeah, okay, so let's, Update you guys on what's been going on in my life. So, I literally haven't posted since my four month update that I did um, about Che, which was like beginning of the summer. So the rest of the summer, pretty much all July, we were dedicated to basketball. Carter had basketball um, like every weekend. Every weekend there was a tournament or games so for the whole month of July and the first week of August, we were in a gym. <laughs> and you know, I'm not complaining. Um, it's definitely, you know, ball is life <laughs> in our family, but we didn't get to do as much stuff as we wanted to do. We did do some day trips. Uh, we went to Niagara, but I, I posted about that. Um, we did a beach trip and just other like local trips, a lot of parks, pools and stuff like that. Um, but nothing like major, nothing like so much, not nothing like going away or anything, unfortunately. But you know, it is what it is. Um, Carter, you know, he learned a lot and got to play a lot of ball and be with his friends. So he had a great time. Um, and yeah, we just chilled and watched. And you know, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I love watching ball, but I, I do wish that we were able to get out more to like beaches and do more barbecues and stuff like that. But Unfortunately, we were so that was pretty much what happened in all of July. It was full of basketball and just day trips and stuff. And then um, in August, um, so I don't know. I haven't really shared with you guys, but um, Andrew's mom, uh, she's been battling um, cancer for a few years now. She um, she had breast cancer uh, about she got diagnosed about four five years ago. And she she beat it, and then it came back, and um, yeah, it came back uh, about a year ago, and it got progressively worse. So this past August, um, she found out that it was basically terminal. She was terminal. She didn't have much time left, so um, pretty much all of August was us spending as much time as possible with her. It was definitely. Um, one of the harder things I've had to 
experience and the saddest thing that I've um, actually witnessed, like watching someone that's so close to you and that you love so much basically deteriorate. Like it, it was every day progressively, like she would just get worse. Like, you know, beginning of August, she, she was, she couldn't really walk. She couldn't um, do much, but she was up. She was able to communicate and, um, and, and she was, you know, speaking with us, having conversations. It's just she couldn't really talk much and she wasn't eating as much. And then fast forward to a week later, she wasn't able to walk at all. She was she was barely able to hold a conversation without um, without getting out of breath. Um, she was barely eating. She was getting skinnier. And then a week after that, it was she was getting infections and, you know, getting skinnier and skinnier and not being able to talk at all and having to not being able to take no food and drinking fluids from straws and like it was just it was really really hard to um to watch and we were we me and the boys we went there almost we stayed we ended up spending like the most of our stuff august in oshawa because andrew's mom was staying out in whippy with her sister and so my mom lives out in oshawa and we stayed in oshawa that way we could be closer and we went to visit her every day for about three weeks you know we were there every day the boys would go and visit her you know as much as they could like they couldn't always be inside because she would get anxiety and when there's too many people around so they'd go out and play but i think just us being there like at um where she was it it, it helped her like she didn't always want us around because you know they're loud and whatever and she needs to rest but the fact that we were there with her i think that gave her some kind of um made her at ease um so she spent the last month um at andrew's aunt's house and if there's one thing that I did learn throughout this experience, um, it's that, you know, family is everything. Um, throughout that month, Andrew's family literally dedicated their lives to taking care of her. I know in some cases, some families, like, they're not as fortunate. They can't take time off work. And for whatever reasons, they're not able to be there. And so some people end up having to put their family members in palliative care or whatever the case may be. But um, Andrew's mom was fortunate enough that she has nine siblings that um, all coordinated schedules and um, were able someone was always with her at all times which I thought was really special and it just showed me you know family is all you have at the end of the day and you need to cherish those times like the last week um, that she was alive um, her, the whole all of her siblings stayed over and they slept over and they never left her side and there was always someone there me and andrew stayed over as well and it was just really like even though they're going through this hard time this like really um tragic time in their life because this is the first uh, passing of someone in their family and um the first real tragedy i feel like his family has had to deal with and um they were just all there for each other and so supportive and i was just you know, as much as, as bad as the situation was, I felt like, uh, what's the, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know how to describe it. It was just such a nice feeling being around family and seeing all the love that was there in the room for her. And, you know, despite why everyone was brought together, um, it was just really nice to see that end. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I don't even know what I'm trying to say. I'm rambling. I'm rambling again. I don't even know what I'm, my point I'm trying to make. My point is that family is everything. And Andrew's family definitely showed me that um, in in the last, in this last few months. Like, I totally admire them. And my hat goes off to their family. Okay, I'm doing my brows. I might not like, stop talking because I can't do my brows and talk. Like, that's really, it's very hard. I mean, I've never tried it, so if I get quiet, I mean, it's like ultimate focus. I should have really done these before, but whatever. Whatever. So, um, yeah, Andrew's mom, she did pass um, end of August. I think it was the 24th or something like that. And uh, it was it was hard, like you know when you're we've been expecting it, we knew it was coming, um, but it still doesn't really prepare you for when it actually happens. Um, it was uh, I didn't think I would be as 
upset as I was. I was a mess that day. And, you know, it's funny, like, Andrew, I thought he would be a mess too, but he was the one kind of holding it together for everybody. And I don't know if that's because he felt like he needed to be strong or if um, he just kind of already has been coping with it and has accepted it for a while now. But that day that it happened, oh man, like he, he just showed me another side of him and like, ugh, I love him even more for that, for that moment that I was able to witness, like seeing him be that man um, that he was that day. It was, it was really, it was special. Um, but yeah, the ceremony was beautiful. Um, Carter actually said a few words. That's another thing too, like dealing um, with death someone who's so close to you with kids like the kids they they kind of understood well Mello had no idea but Carter kind of understood but he's very he's very reserved and doesn't like to talk too much about his feelings you could tell like when we even when we would go visit her at Andrew's aunt's house like he wouldn't like to get too close or you know like he it's not like he was scared but he just didn't know how to act around her and um and, you know, after when it happened, I think he was shocked. So when it happened, she she had been staying at the house for a month. And then um, the, the day that she passed was the day that she got moved to palliative care. The, the family decided to move her to palliative care um, because that, they thought that that would be best for her. And she wasn't even in palliative care for, for like, a, an hour, two hours. She passed, like, within a few hours of getting there. But when Car Carter had said bye to her or, you know, seen her leave and um, when we later told him that day that she ended up passing, I think he was a bit shocked. He didn't think that it would happen that fast. But, you know, he took it really well, I guess, as well as he can take it. Um, and Mello, you know, he, he, he he's funny. Like, you know, he'll say he's sad about it. He's like, I miss Bavo. We try to we try to encourage, you know, like to talk about your feelings and, you know, reminisce on the good times and focus on that stuff rather than the sad stuff for them at least anyway and it's cute because um so she had this butterfly tattoo and um so now we kind of associate butterflies with her so every time we see a butterfly we're like oh look there's Vovo you know she's watching over you and guys I kid you not like I used to see butterflies before obviously but we literally see butterflies every day like it's so and so it's so crazy. Like, we literally see them every day. On our walk, when we walk to school in the morning, we see them. Carter will tell me. He'll come over to school and be like, Mom, I saw a butterfly today at recess. And it was funny. The other day, Carter's like, yeah, Mom, there was, like, a few butterflies. He's like, I think Vavo made some friends up there. And then Carmelo, of course, Carmelo, he's like, Vavo doesn't visit me ever. I don't ever see butterflies. Why doesn't she come to visit me? Like, I'm just laughing because, well, Carmelo, Carmelo kills me. He's such a character. Um, but it, it, it's nice that, you know, they can like associate her with something else and like know that she is okay. Um, that gives kind of, that eases my heart a little bit, but it does, you know, it's, and still, I still get upset. It, like with death, I found like, I haven't really, I've lost people that are close to like my, my grandpa and my grandma, but I was very young when it happened. So processing it is different than when you're an adult. This is like the first death that has happened to me in my life that it's been someone who I'm close with and a family member and so I find that it comes in like dealing with like a death it comes with like spurts like one day you're fine like I'll, I'll go all day being okay and then the slightest thing I'll think of something that reminds me of her and I'll just feel so sad like just you know I don't know like upset and it's just it's a weird thing but then you know after you feel upset you try to think okay yeah but you know like the good times like oh yeah I remember when she did that or you know I remember when this happened and then when you remember that stuff it's just like oh god like that's never gonna happen again I'm never gonna be able to talk to her again I'm never you know that, that stuff it, it's hard to, it's it's so messed up it's hard to cope with like I'm sure some of you who have um if you've ever lost somebody like you can relate maybe to what I'm saying like it's just a weird, weird thing. And, you know, it's probably going to be like that for a while, you know, these spurts, like up and down, like I'm okay, and then I'm not okay, and then I'm okay, and I'm not okay, and it's like that. 
you just like you get in a funk and I feel like that's kind of why I've been in a funk this last I don't know month now since it's happened like I just feel so unmotivated like I haven't really had the desire to make YouTube videos or do anything creative for that matter and I mean I guess that's part of it I don't know um but that's just kind of where I'm at right now I'm trying to break like doing this video you don't even know guys I've been like planning this video in my head for like a month <laughs> I'm like okay guys I'm gonna do a get ready with me video and update everybody on what's been going on in my life and this and that and like every day I'm just like okay I totally don't want to do it today or I'm just so unmotivated and it's really hard and now it's affecting like I feel like it's affect like I'm just not I'm at this place where I'm just not where I want to be um, in many different aspects, but, like, specifically, like, you know, my health, like, not health, but, like, my weight. I haven't really been taking care of myself the way I should be. Um, I guess maybe that's just with all the eating out over the summer we did because we weren't really home much. And getting back into a routine, like, it's hard to break those bad habits. Like, I would always, like, munch out at night and eat, like, junk food at night. And I'm stopping it, but it's gradual, you know. So I haven't really been happy with my weight and then, like... You know, I don't know. I don't know what it is, guys. I'm just, I'm just in a funk right now, you know? You know? Hopefully I'll be able to get out of it. I Actually, I know I'll be able to get out of it. I'm just, you know, going through it. But, you know, the kids do keep me busy. And I think that's another thing. Like, finding time for myself. Like, yeah, you know, people are like, oh my god, like, how do you do it? You're like super mom and... I can't believe you do it with three kids. Like, I had about, like, ten people tell me that yesterday. I don't know. I posted something. They're like, oh, my God. Like, I don't know how you do it. You're super mom. I can't even do it with one. And it's like, girl, I don't even know how I do it. I don't know how I do it. I just do it. Most of the time, like, I'm barely surviving. Like, I make about a thousand mistakes a day. I say so many wrong things most of the time. Like, in the day, like, I'm just, I'm. let me tell you, I am not by, like, the farthest thing from perfect and there's nothing I can do about that you know I just have to learn from those mistakes and try to do better every day like that's all I can do but I find like I need to start taking time for myself like even if it's like an hour like yesterday I was like I don't know I was trying to go to the mall with the boys and um they were just acting up Che had a shitty diaper he was crying Carmelo had no clothes on I told him to get ready and he's like oh my drawer is stuck and Carter's just bouncing the ball around and it was just chaotic like I just had like this moment and I just wanted to like scream so loud and I'm just like forget it guys you know we're we're not going we're not going to the mall and I like put on Che's cartoons he watches these nursery rhymes on the tv and I said we're not going and I'm like okay hey, Carter sit with your brother for a little bit and I had to go and take a shower <laughs> like that, that was my escape like I have to I had to just separate myself from them for like 20 minutes and just do me and honestly that 20 minutes of me showering I felt better and it's so weird but like that's just what it is with the mom like you know you you your your needs have taken a back seat to everybody else's but it shouldn't always be like that you know like I'm finding that the more the less time I take for myself the more crazy I'm not crazy but like the more um I don't know, not not sad or whatever, but like I don't know. I just you just need time for yourself, guys. Like moms, you need you need time for yourself. Um, it's so important to be able to take that time for yourself, so that way you can be better for everybody else. I find when I don't take that time, I'm just so grouchy and a mess, and you know, and then I take it out on the kids, and I'm like angry and whatever. So I think taking an hour or something for myself out of the day. Uh, will be beneficial to not only me but the kids i don't know i don't know i don't know navigating through this thing called life like there's no manual for it i wish there was sometimes like just tell me what to do tell me how to like i don't know i'm just rambling at this point <laughs> really and truly i'm just rambling but yeah so that's what's been going on with me guys like a lot you know a lot's been going on. I haven't really talked. Like, this is the first time I actually spoke about um, Andrew's mom passing. Um, even me and Andrew, we don't really talk about it too much. I think it's a thing, like, where I feel like if I, I don't want to bring it up because, like, I know he'll get upset. But at the same time, like, it worries me that he hasn't really talked about it. Like, I don't think he's fully dealt with it. 
but I don't want to push that on him. Like, I, he, everybody has their own healing process and grieving process, and I just hope he knows when he's ready, he can talk to me, and, you know, we can cry it out together if you need to, or whatever, if we just want to talk. Like, I hope he knows that. I think he knows that, hopefully. Um, but, yeah, so that's what's been going on. Dealing with a lot. Now, kids are back to school, kind of back to regular programming, I guess. Um... But, yeah, like, that's enough. Like, I just feel stuck now. Like, I need, I don't know. And I'm glad I'm starting these YouTube videos again because I needed something to kind of, for me. Like, I'm doing everything for all the kids. Like, I'll, like I have my routine of things that I do every day. And, you know, it's rarely anything for myself. So, I think with doing these YouTube videos, it's going to really help me, like, um, take time for my, it's just something personal for me to do. And that I can, like, you know, look back and be proud of and whatever. Because right now, like, I, I just don't have nothing going for myself. Like, in a sense where I'm taking time for myself. Does that make sense? I don't know. Guys, I'm freaking rambling. I don't know. I'm trying to, like, speed this up because Chase sleeping right now. But, you know, that, that, that can change at any given moment. So, yeah. I think I'm done with this look, though. So, yeah. So, guys... Going forward, what can you expect from me? Well, I'm going to be doing more videos, so please let me know what you would like to see in the comments below. Um, someone requested to me a, a um, what was it called? A day in the life or like a, a day with me or whatever. And I'll probably do that like my daily routine because I've kind of, I have a routine now that the boys have started school and I even have Che on a routine. So maybe I'll share that with you guys and um, show you how I got about uh, getting Che on a routine. It was not easy, but very necessary for my sanity and his own. So yeah, I'm going to vlog more, hopefully. Um, I know you guys miss the kids and the family, so definitely show you guys more content from them. And yeah, I don't know. Any other suggestions I'm still open to? Um, and yeah. Fall is here. Mm, my favorite, Velvet Teddy by MAC. Oh, this is like an everyday lippy. Like, you can't go wrong with this at all. I should have lined my lips. Should I line my lips? Should I line my lips? That's the question. No, I can't line my lips because my lip liner is not in this bag. Okay, no, I'm not lining my lips. Don't judge me. Okay. So, yeah. This is a very basic everyday look. Like, I barely wear makeup to begin with, but you guys should know that. Maybe that's what I'll do, like... I'll do more videos about makeup and learning how to apply it. I don't know. That's something, like, out of my element. But, like, this is pretty much my everyday go-to. Super simple. Just so I look presentable to, you know, the world and other adults. I know I don't look like a bum all the time. Anyways, guys. <laughs> I think this I'm, I think I'm going to wrap this video up before I start rambling some more. Um, thank you guys so much for watching and listening to me and dealing with me. Um, I know it's not easy at times and I ramble and I'm all over the place and I'm here and I'm there, but my mind is literally like, uh, jambled, jumbled and jambled, whatever. So it's hard for me to collect my thoughts sometimes, especially when I'm doing it on a time limit. I should probably have like keynotes right now, but anyway, um, thanks for watching guys. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment down below any other videos you want to see. Give me some feedback maybe on coping tips on how you dealt with grief. Like, um, I'd really be interested into hearing that because, you know, dealing it, dealing with it with kids and talking to them about that and dealing with it with your spouse and with yourself. Like, I'm really interested in hearing how other people have coped with tragedies or anything in their life. That'd be great. Um, as always, thanks for watching, guys, and stay tuned for my next video.